Welcome, Commissioner. As we mark International Anti-Corruption Day, let's talk about corruption, how it works and what effects it has both locally and globally. So tell me, what is corruption and what does it look like? Corruption comes in many forms. The most obvious is the giving and receiving of bribes in order to obtain something from government, a licence, a condition, something of that nature. But corruption can come in other forms as well. It can be an abuse of office, a person who wantonly abuses their office in order to inflict damage on somebody else or to promote another's interest. So corruption is many faceted. How would you assess the level of corruption on a global scale? Would you say it's out of control? And if so, how did it get so bad and why does it stay that way? I suspect corruption has been with us over the centuries, uh, but Transparency International, which is a major non-government organisation, uh, does a Corruptions Perception Index every year and rates about 177 countries. Thankfully, Australia is very high in the anti-corruption, uh, ranking currently 13th, along with uh, Iceland. Uh, it would be nice if we could be number one. It is a perception. More particularly, the World Bank has estimated that corruption costs the world each year about $2.6 trillion, or 5% of global GDP. So you can see how corruption is a serious economic problem. That is an extraordinary figure, and you mentioned before that corruption often comes in the form of bribes. Is it always about money, though, or is it simply a matter of greed? In some very poor countries, I suspect it's a matter of survival. Uh, police officers who stop travellers on the road and extort fictitious fines in order to make a living. Uh, but a lot of it, of course, is untrammeled greed. When you look at the immense wealth that some uh, autocratic leaders and their cronies have accumulated, it's hard to say that it's anything but greed. And of course, the worst thing about it is they've often done it at the expense of the people they're supposed to be leading. So we hear a lot about bribery and corruption being a way of life in developing countries. Is it really that intertwined with the culture of a country? And what is that line between doing business and corruption? That is a very fine line. And in some countries it might be cultural. But 140 countries have signed up to the UN Convention on Anti-Corruption, a 2005 convention. They are committed to doing more to stamp out and ease the burden of corruption. For example, an Australian who offers a bribe overseas is committing a serious offence against Australian federal law. So you mentioned the United Nations there and it is very clear in its message that corruption affects all aspects of life from education, health, justice, democracy, prosperity and development all over the world. So with the poorest people in most countries being the worst affected, what's being done to stamp it out? There's a variety of things. Many countries have anti-corruption agencies, but those agencies themselves have come under threat from leaders who are intent on nobbling their powers. Uh, there are a lot of very good people in countries working very hard to stamp out corruption, but they face immense forces and, of course, immense corrupt money, so it's hard for people to do it. What are some of those forces you, you talk about? Well, some of those forces are licences. Uh, as the world develops its natural resources, those resources are valuable, and the, there are billions to be made. So corrupting agencies who are going to give out licence is an obvious target. How hard is it to unite different countries and cultures on a shared idea of what corruption is in the first place? I think the world is making progress to that, uh, but at the same time, Transparency International recently did a survey of 22,000 people in the Asian region, and one in four had reported having to have paid a bribe in order to get a government service at some stage and very few were willing to report corruption for fear of intimidation or worse. 
It may seem like a bit of a distant concept for people living in Australia, but we're all increasingly global citizens and there's no doubt that Australians love to travel. So when might we have come into contact with corruption or maybe even participated without even realising? Well, you're quite correct. Corruption is transnational. It affects everyone. And if you go to countries that rank high on the uh, Corruption Perception Index, your chances of unwittingly being part of a corrupt bargain somewhere increase uh, from the travel permit that you get to travel on a particular road all the way through. Um, can you think of any particular examples of countries that, or, or areas that where Australians might like to visit where that could be part of their everyday experience when travelling? I wouldn't like to name countries, but Australians um, can experience it uh, first hand, even in highly developed industrial countries such as Italy, as we've recently seen with the tragic collapse of a bridge. Uh, roads are built with inferior materials. Uh, inspectors are bribed to look the other way. And so there are countries with crumbling infrastructure because bribes have been paid. And just looking at the example you gave there, obviously corruption isn't just something that's happening in developing nations. How does Australia measure up against the rest of the world? You mentioned the, um, the, the global rankings. In a general sense, how does Australia match up? Pleasingly, Australia matches up well. We are, broadly speaking, corruption free. That said, every state has an anti-corruption agency of some sort and all are busy. There is of course currently political talk about a federal or national corruption agency which I personally support. So it's one of those things that you have to be completely vigilant and it's no use us saying well it would never happen here because it does. So what you're saying is that even if we don't have terrible poverty and poor health services because all the money's being siphoned off, we don't really have a right to be smug or think this is someone else's issue? Absolutely not. It's our issue in two ways. Firstly, it's our issue to keep our governments, which is the public sector as well as the elected officials, honest and accountable. And secondly, it's our issue because Australian companies increasingly are transnational and will be dealing with countries where corruption is rife. So if we know what corruption is and we know the different ways in which people are corrupt, why haven't authorities been able to stamp it out? Because it is insidious, it is hard to detect, uh, the bargains are done in secret. Um, one of the reasons that this office has the capability that it does to uh, intercept phone calls under warrant, to uh, undercover surveil people, is because corruption hides in the dark places. We have to go in the shadows to find it. And in your experience, are the corrupt getting smarter? Well, corruption is criminal, and criminals are using the latest technology, the latest encryptions, and the latest methods of transferring money around the countries of the region. I mean, banks are no longer in borders. The world is at the press of a button, so a corrupt transaction can be taken overseas within a split second. You just mentioned encryption, and technology has obviously evolved a lot in the past decade. Who do you think is using it better, the corrupt or the authorities? I think it's a catch-up game always for the authorities. Uh, the corrupt and uh, the transnational criminals, drug gangs, people smuggling, child exploitation um, are streets ahead, but the authorities are doing pretty well at catching up. The nature of your job, Commissioner, means that you pretty much live and breathe corruption every day, but in what way does corruption affect most people? It affects most people sometimes when they wouldn't realise it. As I was saying before, when the road that you travel on has lots of potholes where somebody gets favoured for a job over you when you're more qualified. Um, when you see an abuse in office by someone and nothing is done about it. Uh, we get affected every day when officials in a department such as health are lining their own nests instead of 
um, doing their job, then health services suffer. There's a dollar less for health services. I use that as an example, but of course it applies everywhere. So some of those examples you gave are not, uh, they're quite subtle. So is it easy to spot corruption and what should we do if we see it? What can we do to help the fight against corruption? I go back to the survey of the Asian region where most people would not report corruption for various reasons. Um, it's everybody's problem, therefore it's everybody's responsibility to report it. Um, in Australia we have police, we have anti-corruption agencies, we have other agencies. There really is no excuse to say stay silent on corruption. On that note, there's one final question before I let you go, Commissioner. Is corruption a battle that can be won? I think it is. It'll take a lot of time, a lot of effort, but one thing I'm even more sure of, if we stop fighting, we will definitely lose.